In the midst of constant attacks on trans people and trans rights, it's nice to get a little bit of good news once in a while. For example, you know how like every major medical organization supports the right of trans people to access medical care? Like every major medical organization, everybody who has ever studied this has proven that the most effective treatment for gender affirming care, like we've tried, oh, just do therapy. You only need therapy, blah, blah, blah. It's a mental health issue. We've tried that. It doesn't work. It makes people worse, makes their symptoms worse. If a person has like, an emotional distress at being perceived as a female, for example, you can go to therapy and get skills to deal with that distress, but the distress does not go away no matter how much therapy you do. Because the problem is the gender dysphoria of looking like a female. So a therapist can only do so much to help treat you before they have to say, well, it seems like the core problem is that you look like a female. So if you start testosterone and then you grow a big whole beard, it's kind of hard. This is crazy when people say like, oh, people are more suicidal after they start hormones. Like if the thing you feel bad about is looking like a female and then you bust out a full beard on testosterone, which doesn't happen to everybody, but for the sake of this example, it would be really hard to still be upset about your social and biological role as a female if you don't take any of those boxes anymore. If everybody around you is like, man, that's a beautiful beard. You're a sexy man. And also like, you know, you get your surgeries and you don't have the biological functions of being a female. Of course, that is the thing that's gonna resolve the distress. Like it's a physical problem. It's not a mental problem that can be solved with psychotherapy and attempting to solve it through psychotherapy has the results that are the same kind of results that you see from people trying to therapeutically get people to stop being gay. It's basically just a trauma factory. Hey, real quick, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content. Hit the subscribe button as well and turn on all notifications. And also take a moment to check out the links in the description for merchandise and Patreon where you can find exclusive free content. So science, science is behind trans rights effectively. And we have a statement from the American Psychological Association, which is like a huge, gigantically important organization, passing a frankly historic policy resolution opposing gender affirming care bans for trans youth. So the American Psychological Association is the largest psychological association, psychological organization in the world. They have 100, 157,000 members and they've declared quote, Government bans on gender affirming care disregard the comprehensive body of psychological and medical research supporting the positive impact of gender affirming treatments. They re it resolves the organization's support for the necessity of that care for trans youth and adults. The policy passed 153 votes to nine. So this is the strongest policy placement from this organization in support of gender affirming care. It represents a major consensus among leading psychologists on the importance of gender affirming care for youth and adults. I will say, you know, the science is on the side of trans people getting access to care and that hasn't made a difference so far, but if there is anybody out there who is kind of unconvinced or is like, I want to know what the experts say, it's good to have clear, concise statements saying like, you know, we've studied this a lot. We have a hundred thousand members and we all say, we support trans youth having access to this care. So the president of the APA, speaking of the new policy resolution says, quote, it sends a clear message that state bans on gender affirming care disregard the comprehensive body of medical and psychological research supporting the positive impact of such treatments in alleviating psychological distress and improving overall well-being for transgender, gender diverse, and non-binary individuals throughout their lives. The policy includes basically the key findings and resolutions stating very firmly that gender affirming medical care is medically necessary. It's a necessity for trans, gender diverse, non-binary children, adults, uh, and adolescents. The organization opposes these bans on gender affirming care. Strongly, they state, they state that uh, these bans are contrary to the principles of evidence-based healthcare human rights, social justice, and these should be reconsidered in favor of policies that prioritize the well-being and autonomy of trans individuals. 
It goes on to say that being trans is not, quote, caused by autism or post-traumatic stress, saying, quote, legislative efforts to restrict access to care have involved the dissemination of misleading and unfounded narratives, such as mischaracterizing gender dysphoria as a manifestation of traumatic stress or neurodivergence, and equating affirming care for trans people with child abuse, thus creating a distorted perception of the psychological and medical support necessary for these youth, creating a hostile environment that adversely affects their mental health and well-being. Thank goodness someone's pointing it out like, oh, the, the American Psychological Association is here to say that what you are doing is causing an intense amount of psychological damage to this group of people. They um, stand in opposition to false information about trans-related care. There's a section saying gender-based bias and mistreatment, such as discrimination, violence, non-affirmation, or rejection in response to their gender diversity. These pose significant harm, including risk of suicide, to the well-being of children, adolescents, adults, and families. According to Aaron Reed, um, this is not the first policy that has been released by the APA on the general subject of supporting trans rights, but this policy goes further than previous ones stating outright direct support for gender affirming care as being medically necessary, as well as opposing the misinformation fueling anti-trans legislation across the country. Yeah, basically like one of the main purposes of this policy statement is just to say, to declare outright that the medical consensus is that these treatments are evidence-based care, which means that these have the strongest positive results as in like the person is experiencing distress. We put them in therapy first and then we put them on the medicine and the medicine actually resolves the issues that they were having in a way that therapy never could over and over and over and over and over again. So every major, major medical organization out there follows these practices because they have been shown through repeated attempts to see how it goes, you know, that this is the care that actually resolves the feelings that actually works. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it solves all of your problems because if you transition and then you are dealing with transphobia, you might be happy within yourself, but still dealing with negative social repercussions. And that can be very, very painful and difficult. And you know, it can cost you your job. You can then be housing insecure. Like the problems don't stop when you transition. In fact, some of your problems are probably going to increase because the world is more hostile to trans people than cis people. But still, as far as resolving the initial distress of the incongruence between your brain and your body medical care time and time again slam dunk is the re is like the thing to do it is the answer transphobes will now claim that the apa is lying positing that the thousands of qualified psychologists are all in on a big conspiracy that absolutely no evidence exists for and no one blows the whistle on in their minds this conspiracy is more likely than them simply being wrong about something i don't think that's the case I don't think they actually believe in a conspiracy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that they will make up anything that they need to make up in order to bolster their opinion that fundamentally is based on like um, a moral judgment slash disgust response. Or even, you know, I don't even know that a lot of these politicians care about trans people enough to be disgusted by us. We are just a convenient scapegoat for them to usurp democracy with. Um, but that's just a theory, a political theory. <laughs> that I wish I did not have, but you know, that's just me. That's just me, my little opinion. But anyway, it's good to know, despite the fact that much of the time this scientifically proven information doesn't matter because it can be discredited, it's still nice to know that the APA is coming out swinging hard in support of not just trans care in general, but specifically that trans youth deserve access to care and acknowledging that trying to blame gender dysphoria on trauma or autism are negative things to do and that like that that is a fallacious way to address this problem that these are unrelated issues that gender dysphoria is not there's no evidence to suggest that it is caused by childhood trauma or by being autistic trans people be like hey let me live my life in peace thanks conservatives why do you have to make everything so political yeah thank goodness for a win every once in a while we need to take it in we need to appreciate it we need to absorb it. Thank you to my patrons for being so patient this month. I want to thank especially Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Michelle Frateroli, Amanda B, Wellington Marcus, Michelle Winter, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, LV Nobody, Past Null Infinity, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Nova, Sojo, Elizabeth Bartell, Sarah A, Kevin Young, 
Athiet, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.